Um, so welcome to another edition of um, GoTech Empire Python tutorials. In these tutorials, particularly, we'll be looking at the data type set, which is not so common, but it's very, very useful, especially if you're dealing with mathematics. You're a mathematician and you need to use um, programming for mathematical tasks. Um, I think um, this will be a very, very important data type for you because it behaves just like sets, okay? So if you're into probability and other stuff, yeah, there may be Python models that can handle that for you, but I think sets is a good way to start. So let's dive directly into the video. Um, now, we're gonna be doing some literature before, you know, putting our hands dirty with some code. And I'm gonna clear this like um, exit. And clear. All right, so let's look into some stuff here. So as you can see, um, a, set, a set can be defined as an unordered collection of unique immutable objects that support operation corresponding to mathematical set theory. So, like we're saying, a set is can be made up of immutable. And remember, it said unordered immutable objects. It means Items in a set are not ordered. You remember items in a set are not ordered because you know they are unordered, which means you can't index them like we had with list where you can have a list like this. And see, if you haven't watched the video on list, I think it's about three videos back from this video, like number this number eleven, maybe number eight, nine. So just check it out, you know. So if you have a list like this, this item is ordered. It will print. Oh, sorry, I don't want to use this. Because this is a Python keyword. All right. So if you have L equal to one, two, three, four. So see L. Now it's ordered. Each item you put here or you paste here maintains its order that's why you can actually say index zero and get the first item you can say index one to get the second item and so on and so forth so but um sets are unordered and let me show you an example of a set for example my set equal to there is an example of a set as you can see it's also a sequence, which means it make up made up of a sequence of items. So it's a sequence, but it's unordered. For example, can I try to print my sets? All right. So let's say um, we're gonna be seeing stuff like why it's unordered. For example, let me see. Let me create a set from a list. We are going to see all this. I just want to make a point and um, 3.45 or oh, let's see and um, 3.2 hello so, um, three plus four okay maybe a two two six two six or two nine. All right. Now I'm trying to create the set um from a list. So you we're gonna see how to do this. All right. So I want to show you why we say sets are unordered. For example, um, look, the item here. It's now the first. Before this item came second. This item came third, and so on. But as we're going to be seeing from sets, sets are usually on order. Most times, when you create a set and display it, it doesn't follow the same order. And because of this, um, Python sets are non-indexable. For example, you can say list 0, but you can't say my set 0. You can't use the index non-subscriptable. You can't use the... Um, the index operator to, to retrieve a value in a set. That's one thing you need to know. You can't use the index operator. We are going to see ways you can use to get items from a set, but let's know you can't actually use the index operator to get an item for a set from a set. All right, so let's move on now. Set now. So sets you should know sets are unordered. Now, by definition, an item appears in a set only once. 
we are going to see that. Uh, let's see some stuff. All right, by definition, an item appears in a set only once. I'm going to be showing you that right now. For example, if you have my set equals to one, two, three, four, and uh, maybe three, four, three, four, eight, nine. And let's see my sets. All right, see now we have one, two, three, four. We don't have three again. We have eight, nine. I can even show you some. Let's say we have two, three. My set. Now realize all the duplicates within a set are discarded. Whatever, however you create the set, for example, if you create the set from a list, let's create the set from a list, from a Python list, let's copy these items here. I just want to show you a set will always discard duplicates. Now look, my set. We still have one, two, three, four, eight, nine. Duplicates like two, this two is not included because it's already in the set. So, Sets help you, like we've seen in the next few, in the next example ahead. Sets help you save data, non-repeatable data. Means you can extract them data from a particular list or from a file, and you see accumulated in a set without any repetition. It can help you save unique data. Many times, when you're operating user information or numbers or usernames or a lot of stuff, you have repetitions, and you're looking for a way to accumulate this data or save this data or extract this data without repetitions. By doing this, you can initially place this information within a set. A set will actually save this information and in case you attempt to place a duplicate, the set is just going to ignore that duplicate. So sets are very important if you want to find a way to save unique data or to stack up unique data without any repetition. So let's continue. Because sets are collections of other objects, they share some common behaviors with objects such as lists and dictionaries. For example, sets are iterable. For example, we can say we can use the for loop. We are going to learn the for loop in some a few videos ahead. We can say for item in in my set my set. Print item or square. Does this work? All right. So, just like a list, a set is iterable. For example, we went through this set, and for every item in the set, we we, we raised it to the power. Here is the power. We are going to learn operators in a few videos ahead. You know, here is the power raised to the power. So, item raised to the power two. The four is going to get through for item in my set. It's going, item is going to be 1, letter 2, letter 3, letter 4, letter 8, and letter 9. And for each of them, we're doing um, raised to the power 2. So, that's very important for you to know. Now, alright, so um, let's, do, let's continue reading. So, the set, you can see sets are actually iterable. We can iterate through them and, you know, with a for loop or whatever the iterable you know so let's continue because you know so we have for example sets are iterable can grow and shrink you can add items to a set and you can remove items from a set we are going to be looking at all that you know we are going to be looking on how you can add item to a set and how you can remove item from a set so let's continue for example, set I alright, so we say as we will see later, a set acts much like a keyless dictionary, like we have seen. Remember, here is a set. Um, now here is an example of a set. Let me see set one equals to uh, let's say manual comma um, thirty two and um, true or let me see uh, 6.7 sorry 
um, I made a mistake. All right. All right. Now, remember, if this was a dictionary, we we'll just write, for example, date one equals to. We we'll have something like name. Name. And uh, age. And um, height all right so this is a dictionary and this is set as you see sets are very similar to dictionary but they are like what we call keyless dictionary for example if you take away all the keys from this dictionary it's just going to be like a set so that's why you see they say sets are like keyless dictionaries you see but it support extra options as we are going to be seeing you can find a lot of stuff you can find difference between two sets the union of two sets the intersection of two sets the symmetry difference between two sets and we can find if one set is a superset of another set we're going or if one set is a subset of another set we're going to be seeing how you can do that you know and you, you see we're going to see how you can also expand a set so set has more options than dictionaries like you can do more sets are like mathematical sets in reality you can carry out setting operations with sets like we're going to be seeing later so we said however because sets are on order like i told you when you assign values to a set you, when you print that set out for example let's print set one you see okay this is a very good example now we declared set one with emmanuel as the first but note emmanuel 32 is rather the first while emmanuel is the second and whatever so it shows you clearly a set is on order. The way you declared it is not the way it's internally represented. For example, you can see here this set. Instead of the let's see now, let's try to create a set from from a dictionary. Let's see if it's possible. Set one equals equals to set. Let's just set. I'm sure it's going to take the keys rather equals to dict one set. I know it's going to take the keys yeah so you see if you create a set from a dictionary it picks only the keys like i told you when you iterate over a dictionary normally you mostly pick the keys of the dictionary so you see it picked out name age and height yeah so like I'm, i was trying to explain um let um earlier you see we created set one like this that at the point when we printed it out you saw 32 was the first which means sets are on order so however because sets yeah he said however because sets are unordered and do not map keys to value like dictionaries um they are neither sequences you know sequences need to be in an order they are iterables but they are not sequences sorry they are iterables but they are not sequences because sequences usually you can um they are ordered so you can index them but you can index item in a set for example if you say set one zero like i showed you it's not going to work so you can index them so there are neither sequences nor mapping types like dictionary they are a category of their own that's why we're looking at them differently now one of the main differences between a set and other data types is that though it, a set is immutable is mutable that means you can change items within a set that's you can change an item within a set like we'll be seeing later Though a set is um, mutable, it means its items can change. A set cannot contain immutable items. Let me show you. A set cannot contain mutable items. It can only contain immutable items. So he said one of the main difference between a set and other data type is that though a set is mutable, it can only contain immutable items or objects. For example, a list cannot, you know, we, like we learned earlier, a list and a dictionary are immutable, are mutable sorry and that they can be changed in memory so they cannot be part of a set the only stuff that you can put in a set are strings numbers um and triples will be bowling because bowling too are uh, um uh, somehow they are, they are actually um immutable so let's see let's see that let's prove that let's prove that all right so let's say set two equals to let's use um integer a 
the float a complex and what next um it's super two three four and what next a bowling true so these are the main types we have here now let's say set three let's try to create set three and let's add is let's add a list to the set now you see the set on hashable type lists we attempted to add a list to a set and they told us it's on hashable it's, it's trying to tell us lists are mutable because ha and hashable types are types which are not mutable immutable types are known as um, hashable types mutable types like lists are known as unhashable types if you haven't watched the video on mutability and immutability you can watch it you can first watch it first you can like it's good to watch it before this um video because there i explained a lot of stuff on what i'm trying to explain now on mutability immutability and the garbage collector so if you haven't watched it i think it'd be a good idea for you to go check it out you know it's very important so when they talk about unhashable we are trying to say it's mutable unhashable means immutable so set lists are actually mutable their values can be changed so it can be part of a set a set can only contain hashable um, objects or immutable objects you know it can be confusing at times so i have to make mistakes on that so it's just good to know that so we can also have a dictionary for example if you try to put a dictionary here i think it should give us an error let's try that name A, a, B, and we have um, H. All right, dict detected. We are trying to add an unhashable type dict. So I'm trying to show you because dict data type is also mutable. So we can be part of a list of a um, set. Sets can only contain us contain stuff like like this a number which is immutable a float which is in an integer which is immutable a float which is immutable and um, a complex which is immutable a tuple which is immutable and a boolean which is immutable so that's what you can actually have within a set so let's continue now next sets are enclosed like we've seen sets are enclosed in braces. You know like dictionary so for example you can see how do you create an empty set if you want to create an empty set you can say set for equal to if you do like this let's check type set for now you see it's a dictionary it's not a set and you know why when we studied dictionary in the previous video if you haven't watched the video on dictionary and interested to know about dictionary you can watch the previous video we did you know that's where we talked about dictionary so if you want to create an empty set you have to do like this um let's see you must create it from something so we can say sets five or let's say set four equals to sets Right, so type. All right, so here is how you create an empty set. You use the set, the built-in set uh, method, and you're gonna create an empty set. So here is how you do it. So I just wanted to show you that. All right, so let's see. So you see here is an example. Set one has one, two point five, three, and true. Here are all immutable types. Now immutable types the statement below will generate an error this one is going to generate an error as we all know as i've shown you because we tried to create a set but we used a list which is mutable and is all which is not hashable you understand so sets only accept hashable or immutable types now you can create a set from any sequence such as a list string support all right so 
let's let's um, play with that now let's say s1 equals to set let's create it from a string any iterable you can create a set from any iterable now let's first use a string welcome let's look at the set now look a set has been created now look how it on order it is we have w here we have c here l is totally on order so never look at the set as an ordered um, collection is so on order so let's now move to s2 let's create it from a list s2 equals to set if, remember if you put three it's not going to work it must be an iterable when when you're trying to create a set from a, a, an iterable you can't use a single number it must be something like a list a tuple a string so let's use a list two four four point five and five now there we go so you see it's on all that all right so we can also create from a tuple if there was a tuple and like I showed you earlier, like I showed you earlier, you can also create it from a dictionary. Um, we had a dictionary before. All right, let me just do one here. So S three equals to set. Here is a dictionary, and we have name and. Miriam is is one and we have um um true now look at it look um all right so S three you see it's going to pick out just the um keys and it's still on all that so sets are always just on all that you see. We have now tall which was the last and all this stuff so i just wanted to see how sets operate you can create them from all these different data types now like here we created a set from um a list here we created it from a, a, a tuple and all that so here is here is it so now you can also carry out various operations on a set i'm going to be showing you this right now so you can understand Let's now look at some two pieces of sets. Now we have a set S1 equals to 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9. We have hello, yeah, hi. And we have 3 plus 2 T. Now we have S2 equal to something similar to this. Let's use other values like um, 8, 4, 12, 3, 6, 5, and Pause. now now let's um have another set s three equal to let's copy um this now let's add some stops here Just add a tuple. Now we have three sets. Now we are going to do a lot with these sets. We are going to start by looking at different set operations. Like we have to see the mathematical aspects of set or what makes sets different from other data types in Python. So we are going to look at that right now. Now let's look at the difference. The difference between two sets A and B is given by A minus B. We're looking from the right hand side. We return a set that contains items in set A hmm, that are not in set B, while B minus A will return items which are in set B and are not in set A. 
So let's take let's call our results or let's call our final set here set four because know that this operation should turn a set, so you have to be ready to collect and um, to assign that set to a variable. So let's say s1 minus s2. What this will return is items which are here and are not here. Let's check the s4 now. If you check, it return one, yes, because one is not here. Um, S1 minus S2 return items in S1 that are not in S2. So 1, 5, 7, and this, 9, and hello are in S1, not in S2. But S2 return items that are in S2, like 4, 8, 4, and 12, but not in S1. So it's called the difference between two sets. Now let's look at the union between A and B. A so S1, sorry, S1 union, union S2. You see, it combines both S1, but you know a set will never have duplicates. So it's going to combine them yet, but ignore any duplicates. So you see, pause, one, three, four, five, two. You see, it got six, seven, it has 12, nine, 12, and every stop is there. Now it combines these two sets, but it's going to eliminate duplicates. For example, you see only one six, you see only one six, and you see only one three. You see only one three and only one six. So this is how we say S1 union S2 is also equivalent to S2 union S1. You understand? So next we have intersection. The statement A and B will return a set containing items that are in both sets. Then you know we return a set that contains a combination of items in set. So now let's look at A union B. It only contains items that are in both sets. So let's look at S1 union S2. Now look, it returns high because high is in S1 and high is in S2. 3 is in S1 and 3 is in S2. 6 is in S1 and 6 is in S2. So that's union. Now let's look for the symmetric difference. The symmetric difference of Two sets A and B will return a set that contains a combination of the items found in set A that are not in set B and, and the items found in set B that are not in set A. So let me explain. If we have S1, um, it's called, where is the, I'm looking for the sign. Um, Looks like I don't have it on my keyboard. Oh, I'm going to copy it from here. So this sign, I need this sign. I write up. All right, I've seen it on my keyboard. All right, so, so let's say we have S1 and um, symmetric difference of S1 and S2. Look at what it returns. It returns items that are in S1 but not in S2, combination with items that are in S2 but not in S1. So let's see whether it's true. So here is S1 and S2. Let's see. Um, yes, force is in S1, not in S2. One is in, in this. S1 not in S2, 4 is in S2 not in S1, you see 4 is in only 1. So each item return is only present in one of the set, but not in both. 5 is in only 1, S1, 7 is only in S1, 8 is only, eight is only in S2, 9 is only in S1, 3i plus 2j is only in S1, 12 is only in S2, and hello is only in S1. So you see, S1, S2 returns items that are in S1, not in S2, and items that are in S2, not in S1. So it's the same as um, S2 um, with the symmetric difference S1. I think it should return, return the same stuff. Yeah, it's the same stuff. Yeah. Even though it's always on order, you, you have to know that sets are on order. The order of a set is never the same. So symmetric difference. Now let's see if, let's look at the superset and subset. Now, look here. Yeah. S3 is a superset of S2 because all items within S2 are in S3. So if we write S3 greater than S2, it's going to say true. But S1, for example, is not a superset of S2 because all items in S2 are not in S3. So let's see, S1, is it a superset of S2? No. But is S2 a subset of S1? No. S1 cannot even be a subset of S2 because it's, it has more items, so it will not even be possible. But we can say is S2 a subset of S1? Is S2 less than S1? No. 
is S2 a subset of S3? Yes, because all items in S2 are in S1. S3 is a superset of S2, which means S2 is a subset of S3 because so S2 is S2 a subset of S3. Yes, it's a subset of S3. So there's a lot of these stuff, mathematical stuff you can do with sets, but here are just a few. I just said I should show you a few of them. So now those are subset and superset I've shown you now. We can also use the in operator. For example, we can check SCS1. We can say is high in S1. Yes, is is what of is is 10 in S1. No, is the triple 3 plus 2j in S1. 2j in S1. Yes. So I just want to show you, you can also do that. You can use the in operator. It returns true if the um the left operand is in in the right operand. You know that left operand can be any um hashable data type because you know sets in the first place will only have hashable data types. So you cannot even have something like checking if a list is in a set because a list can never be in a set in the first place. So now let's check again. Now we are going to look at a few other things. You know, you can also say um, 10 not. We'll be looking at operators in a few videos ahead. 10 not in S2. Yes, it returned true because yes, 10 is not in S2. You can see S2. We don't have 10 there. But 10 in S2 will return false because 10 is not in S2. So not in is the opposite of in. You are trying to say 10 is not in S2 true. 10 is in S2, no. So in means is in somehow, just like the terminology can be pronounced as is in, while not in is not in. But just know in means is in. You see, you see, 10 is in S2 false. 10 is not in S2 true. So I just wanted to understand that. Now, let's look at a few operations on set. A lot of operations here. Yeah, you have set 1 equals to this. We created it from a string. Here you see a lot of stuff. We set two equals to this, this, this. We created it from a list. Here you can see the sets. Um, set three equals to this. We created it from a tuple. You can see. Now we have set four equals to um, set four equals to. We created a set. You see of strings and a few numbers. Set five equals to this. Now. Set four minus set five. The difference items in set. The difference between items in set four not present in set five. While set seven should be items in set five not present in set four. As you can see, set six gives items in set four that are not in set five. As you can see from here. While um, you can pause this if you're checking it out. While um, set seven will give items that are in set five but not in set um, four. You can see printed it printed out a union combined set four and set five. You know it's going to um, take away any duplicates and you know print set four and set five. You just print both sets. So um, symmetric difference. I told you items in set four that are not in set five plus items set five that are not in set four. And there we go. So we can see the continuation here. So we had the um, we can use the in operator to check. Here is to check if set 7 is a subset of set 5, which is true. Um, Paul in set 4, you can use the in operator. Now, let's see how to add items to a set and how to update items in a set before the, this video ends. So, I'm going to be showing you that right now. So, now let's add some. We have um, S3. Now, look at S3, or let's see if we have S2. All right, so let's add a few items to S2. We can say S2.add. Let's add um, some maybe ET. Let's add S2.add. Let's add some other complex number. Um, let's add another number. Um, now let's check S2. Yeah, so we have added 750 and 70. We added this 77. You see, it's very on order. It's not even in the order we added them. We just mixed it mixed up. So in fact, everything changed. This was the last it came first, and this was the 
middle came last and all those stuff so sets are very unordered i just want you to know that so now adding um items in that form is very slow so we can use the update method to add the sequence of items so if you want to add a sequence of items you can say set dot update but remember whatever you pass into this update method must be a sequence either a string a list or a tuple and maybe a dictionary in fact if you use a dictionary pick out the keys but it's not wise to use a dictionary why would you be using a dictionary so in this case if you want to add um let's say we want to add some items again we can use now a list place those items in a list like let's say 60 comma um one let's say seven plus eight j comma and let's say um 88 sorry said all right you can't update it with a list all right said update doesn't apply to a list object let's check um let's see tuple all right so okay sorry we are making a, a mistake it's supposed to be um i think it can work with a list i'm using set we don't have set it should be s s um s2 sorry all right s2 so let's check s2 now okay so here is it we updated it with a list of items is 60 and here is 60 so we can update with um a tuple let's update with a tuple let me just put two let's put let's say two is not there and i think one is not there two one so here is the tuple don't forget to put the brackets so let's check s2 is good so we can do that and we can update finally with the string if you put um the string is going to spread out if you see um ban you see s2 you see d a n so i just wanted to show you that so um you can check if you want to check other methods in a set you can use the set the d with the set stuff and you see union update pop to remove you can remove an item from a set for example you can say s1 dot remove and remove let's say let's remove 12 sorry um let's remove three to so remove three from s1 you can say let's remove five remove five let's remove nine remove nine s1 so here are what we have all right so um let's check what s1 have now let's remove seven so we can remove seven what do we have in s1 we don't have seven again and you can um, um pop up something for example you can see s1 dot pop pop the last value let's check s1 the last value was the pop s1 so it pop let's pop and okay pop random stops the pop six which was at the beginning but it's on order so you can't depend on pop to pop out anything in order so don't depend on pop 